Up next, the debut of CNN and Fortune Magazine's newsstand. Learn about telltale personality traits written all over your face that can help or hurt you. Our first story tonight looks at you, at your face. Some corporations are learning to read faces for clues of character. Not the expressions on our faces, but the features we were born with. The shape of a chin, the curve of an eyebrow. Sounds silly? GE has looked into how this works. So has American Airlines, MCI. So have a mirror handy as Sharon Collins explains this controversial technique. Since when is your face as important as your resume? The answer lies with this man, Mac Fulfer. Eyebrows signal our mental thoughts. The shape of the eyebrow also tells you how the person is most comfortable in framing their world. Mac Fulfer is a face reader. Round eyebrows are people whose mental focus is people-oriented. Straight eyebrows are people who need the facts. Angled eyebrows are people who want to stay mentally in control. You may be skeptical, but Mac Fulfer has reason to believe this works. He's a trial lawyer who learned face reading to get an edge in jury selection. One of the things that I discovered in 20 years of practicing law is the least reliable information that we ever get from people is what comes out of their mouth. So the value in this comes in being able to look at someone and know immediately, okay, this person is defensive or this person is so stubborn they're not going to change their mind. Absolutely. What I have seen happen is the people who have taken the time to learn face reading have learned a new language. Mac studied hundreds of faces before writing an illustrated book, sort of a how-to on face reading. The book says if your coworker is a perfectionist, they'll have more than two vertical lines between their eyebrows. If their chin sticks out, they'll always get the last word in a discussion, just like this guy. He's got a friend named Bob and wants you to meet. <laughs> If they have a gap between their center teeth like these folks, it means they'll take risks the rest of us might run from. This may sound like some new age fad, but consider this list. All these companies have hired Mac to explain face reading. At Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, management is looking at face reading as a way to improve corporate communications. We watched as the top leaders of one of the world's busiest airports got their first lesson on how to read a face. Here's what I want you to do. Look at Alvy. He's got this mustache, you know, which is, I'm no wuss, you know, I'm, hey, I'm macho, I'm tough. Let's try Michael for just a second. One of the things I see is, look how large his nostrils are. So he comes from a space, emotionally, of abundance. How could this help DFW managers communicate? And why would all those major corporations even try something this unorthodox? I think we have to look at the number of lawsuits that are filed every year for things such as sexual harassment, race discrimination. There's just such a kind of explosion in that type of case. Employee lawsuits are one of the fastest growing areas of litigation, costing companies an average $96,000 per case. Kathy Fragnoli hired Mac because she's an attorney mediator brought in by companies like DFW Airport to help them avoid employment disputes. As a mediator, if I can look at someone's face and try to understand where they're stressed or uh, how I think they, uh, what, what motivates them or, or how they tick, then I'll be able to work with them better. Eyes. What we hold in our eyes is anger. But it's anger about feeling put upon. So we say to Sybil, I know it's already 5.30, but you don't mind staying and finishing up all these reports before you go, do you? And she goes, okay. Even if she says okay, she, what she really said was, you SOB. I don't believe you asked me to do that. But we stayed with Mac three days and watched him read about 60 faces. Not once did anyone tell him he was wrong. What did I point out that was in error? What did I say about you that was like... Not correct. Raise your hand if you have a, a response. No one raised a hand here hey. or here Them or here. Say. We tested Mac to see if he would get hits or misses on some famous faces. We'll let you judge his accuracy. The interesting thing about this forehead is a person that can take a problem and even if it seemed overwhelming to other people can break it down into smaller parts and see, okay, well, here's how to do it. You see a little bit of teeth in this one. 
holds himself to impossibly high standards, hates being wrong. That's Max Reed on Kenneth Starr. Some of these lines out here are kind of interesting. I haven't seen enough of it yet, but those are courage lines. On the personal side, face some things that uh, felt overwhelming. Look who it is. We see jowls here, a person who's uh, comfortable exercising power and authority, incredible stamina. Once they, once they lock on their bulldogs, they don't let go. They're absolutely going for it. On both George Steinbrenner and Margaret Thatcher, he read power and authority from their jawline. And England's William Shakespeare wrote, God has given you one face, and you make yourselves another. The opportunity is to be able to communicate with that person and see how they feel about it. Hey, Alvy, why don't you be the victim? Here you go. Have a seat. If you can see what this person really has to offer and what they have to give, you can utilize them to, the best, to their best advantage and to your best advantage. Mac read a few other faces for us. Elizabeth Dole, he said the shape of her eyebrows shows she's a visionary. Michael Jordan's ear indicates his biggest challenge is avoiding boredom. And when we showed him a section of this face, he said it belongs to a man who has a great capacity for listening. It's the Pope. Mac Fulper analyzed a picture of your face, Willow, and said you too have a great capacity for listening.